this morning and he was good spirits. He was waiting well, for the Because of pine needles, I guess. Yeah. 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 Or wedge. Yeah. That's the point. Saturday night, we went. My wife got me uh, <laughs> the show over, over at the uh, show. Oh. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
and I've heard from many of them, and they are strongly opposed to losing that centerpiece. They don't want to see their neighborhood destroyed. They don't want to see their neighborhood changed. They don't want to live with the construction zone that could go on for who, who knows how long. And they certainly don't want to live next to a medical facility when they bought or built a home next to a park. So they're very frustrated, as am I, with this entire process. And again, I, I urge everyone to do what they think is best. Um, don't be pressured. Uh, make the decision that uh, you feel is right. But again, I'm standing here tonight in opposition of the rezoning. Thank you for those comments. Alderman Koss. Thank you, Mayor. As Alderman, we make the most important decisions at City Hall. In my five years as an Alderman, this is the most important decision I had to make. And not just because I live across the street from the Field of Dreams. I have no self-serving interest in the rezoning of the Field of Dreams. I do not have a political agenda. I have no personal or financial gain. Do I want to see a surgery center across the street from my home? No, I do not. However, as an alderman, my main goal is to work for all the people in my district and not simply a select group. I have worked tirelessly to ensure my 6,000 constituents have a voice and they have spoken. A few have demanded that this issue be put to a ballot. In my district, I believe it has. I've received many phone calls from my constituents who could not stress enough that they vote in every election. Well, there was an election in my district, District 5, on April 7th. In fact, this election was a one-issue race. Alderman Bill Thiel, who has openly supported the plans to build on the field and build replacement fields, and former Alderman Scott Lewandowski, who has opposed the plan. Alderman Thiel is sitting here today, and that is why I will be a yes vote on the rezone. Thank you so much. Thank you for those comments. Is there any other discussion? Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I stood here on April 8th and voiced my struggle concerning this very important and controversial vote. I stated that I felt I should vote against the rezoning in an effort to best represent the constituents in my district. I left City Hall disappointed in myself because I didn't feel as though I did the right thing. The past three weeks have continued to be a struggle. I received many emails and phone calls, but there was a difference in the content. I heard from more neighbors near the Field of Dreams who were in favor of the rezoning. One constituent wrote, those of us in favor of Sheboygan making positive change are almost afraid to voice that support considering the craziness coming from that small group. Another wrote, I'm a neighbor and member of the silent majority that lives only one and a half blocks north of the Field of Dreams. A person opposed to the rezoning stated in an email, now that you have been in office for over a year, you are vulnerable to certain actions from the public. I'm reminding you that you represent us and it is to us who you will answer. Very different tones from those against and for the rezoning. I also received phone calls from constituents stating they knew the mayor and fellow aldermen have been calling me and pressuring me to vote a certain way. I can say with all honesty, that this is far from the truth. I have been an alderman for more than a few years and have proven time and time again that I cannot be persuaded to vote in a way I don't feel is right. The school district chose to sell property that they owned. The Common Council now has to decide if rezoning is in the best interest of the city. The citizens petitioned for a three-quarter vote. The DNR will have to decide if the current plans are acceptable and the East Parcel must have satisfactory fields before ground can be broken for building of the surgical center. I feel if all this leads to the proposed surgical center, due diligence will have been achieved throughout the process. The Common Council's only part in this is to decide on rezoning. As I've said from the very beginning, I believe that the proposal is good for the city, but I struggle with the field of dreams being located in my district. However, we will have increased overall green space more than we have currently. The quality of the fields will be an improvement, jobs will be created, tax revenue will be seen, and in the end, most, if not close to all citizens, will look back and see that this change was a great progress for the city of Sheboygan. After intensive thought and consideration, and with the help of all those who contacted me via phone, email, personal contact, and letters, whether they were for or against the rezoning, I feel that voting for the rezoning of the land is going to be best for the majority of my constituents in my district, as well as the entire city. I realize this rezoning may not pass tonight. However, after this meeting, I'm confident that I will leave feeling as though I voted with a clear conscience and for the right reasons, which is my part in this entire process. Thank you very much for those comments. Is there any other discussion? Alderman Thiel. Thank you, Mayor. First, I want to send out my um, thoughts and prayers to the Eldenburg, Alderman Berg and his um, family. Um, 
for what he's there for. It kind of holds a personal part of my heart since I'm a, a cancer survivor, and um, so it really touched home when I when I read the email today. So um, I may be a little emotional because of that, just because I have a close connection there. Um, I'm here, obviously. There's been a lot of talk. I want to cover a couple topics. Sorry if I'm doing that. They are clicking on. Um, one of them was um, my conflict of interest into this um, particular matter. Um, I have looked into it very deeply. I've looked at the deal between the uh, school system and Aurora. Um, nor in the deal does it even mention my um, account with Sheboygan U Football. Um, it's with the school system and with Aurora, and it's all about phase one in that Butson project. Sheboygan U Football is not getting any money from this deal at all. We have plans to get grants from NFL football, from um, USA football is what we're applying for. We're doing that on our own. We are not getting any additional money from Aurora. So I know there is no conflict of interest, unlike what's been, you know, been mentioned in the paper and all those other type of things. I did my homework, I checked it out. Um, with that being said, I know going into this, I said, I wanted to bring integrity into this um, when I became this position, and I think I'm hurting my integrity if I don't vote. By doing my homework and checking out that I really don't have a conflict of interest, I feel like I'm not doing the true, um, my true job if I don't vote on this matter, because um, that's what I was put in this position to do. Um, otherwise, what would say if um, another uh, big project comes away and they may feel that somebody else needs to just step to the side and say, you know what, I have a conflict of interest, you know, I'm not gonna do it either. <coughs> I think as an elected official, if we don't have a conflict, we have to make the tough decisions, um, whether they're good, whether they're bad. Um, it was interesting, I noticed that uh, when I was um, electing to abstain, um, I noticed that the people from Aurora or people in favor of the project, not only Aurora, but just people in favor of the project, were always very understanding. They said, we understand your stance. Um, they weren't pushy. They didn't harass. They understood. And then all of a sudden, when I started doing my homework, when I came back from some training, and I thought, you know, maybe I need to take a look at this, and maybe I do need to vote on this subject, I can't believe how um, negative from the other side that has become. Um, from things that I've heard people being called to being harassed, not so much myself, but from other older people. And to me, that's integrity right there. Um, that side, that's not showing a whole lot of integrity for the city of Sheboygan and how we want our kids to see how this democratic pra uh, uh, practice works. Um, I've coached kids in this community for 20 years. Um, not only have I taught them a great sport of football, amongst some other ones that I've helped with, out with, but I told them some good life skills. And it's great to know when you're out in a community that those kids still come up to you. They don't call me by my name. They say, hey, coach, how's it going? Um, that's the whole reason um, I do those type of things. Um, this past weekend, this Saturday, uh, Sheboygan New Football had its registration day. And that gave me 20, 200 reasons why I think the elder people should vote yes to help get these, um, this project going. Um, I had some other things that I was gonna say, but I wanna kinda cut it short. And um, Yesterday I read this, um, this quote on, online. It's by um, Walter Payton's son. His name is Jared Payton. And it kinda, it kinda ties football and it, and it kinda fits um, tonight for me. Um, I think he had it on there yesterday. And it was kind of cool, so I had to write it down. Um, his quote for the day was, sometimes there is no next time. No timeouts, no second chances. Sometimes it's now or never. So Alderman, I think it's time is now. So thank you. Thank you very much, Alderman Thiel. Is there any other discussion? <clears throat> Alderman Jose. Um, talk about uh, the honeymoon being over quickly. <laughs> 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 I, 
I went. Th th I didn't go from the frying pan into the fire. I got elected and went right into the fire. <laughs> but um, um, I only have a few comments. Um, this will probably be one, if not the most contentious issue in the in the next two years that we'll we'll vote on and and discuss. Uh, I want to say right off the bat that I really do think that the way that the school board handled it was horrible. They should not have uh, um, been in closed session so close to when they were going to implement this. I understand about closed meetings and how they're necessary for the furtherance of negotiations. And I even more understand, which I'm sure the people that are supporting the Fields of Dream side of the issue don't understand that sometimes things can come together very quickly and you are left with less time. But uh, even so, I think they could have handled it a little better. And so with regard to the way they, the bad handling of it, shame on them. But that's not germane to what we're voting on here tonight. The, the issue of the rezoning has, uh, is, a, is an aldermanic issue. And whether the Field of Dreams is sold to the Aurora people or somebody else, that's the school board's business. And they voted unanimously to do it. But... Being a numbers guy, I decided to collect some data. The phone started ringing the day after I was elected from people on both sides. The emails started coming, the Facebook messages, the messages on my Facebook timeline that I was drinking the Aurora Kool-Aid and such. And so I decided to keep a, a record of the way people came down. And I found that in my district, with direct contact with people that are in the fourth aldermanic district, 75% want the, pardon me, 78% want the Aurora Surgical Center to be built. With people that contact me from outside the district, in the city at large, 70% of the people that contacted me said they wanted the Aurora Surgical Center to be built. And then I started listing the reasons for and against it. And I could find 10 reasons that it should be built, and I could only find three reasons why it should not be built, and they were not compelling reasons. And we could have a big speech about all those reasons, but I'm going to cut it short and just say, uh, I'm going to read you a quote, if I can pull it up here. This is a quote from a letter I received in the last few days from Debbie Desmolin. She said, in conclusion, Please realize it is not in your job description to provide for Aurora. It is in your job description to honor the taxpayer citizens and their wishes. The numbers speak. 75% of my constituents that contacted me want it, want it, the land rezoned, and 70% of the city at large. So I'm going to do just what Ms. Desmolin said, and I'm going to vote for the rezoning. Thank you for those comments, Alderman Jose. Is there any other discussion? Is there any other discussion? <laughs> Alderman Herman. Thank you. Since I've been on the council, I've never seen anything that's... Mark, you need your mic. I've never seen... I haven't seen anything that's become this acrimonious or, or nasty. Um, it, it disturbs me that my colleagues have received nasty emails and, and threats and that this has revolved into high school stuff and, and, and childish behavior. There's, there's no need for that. that. That hurts me deeply. I mean, you, you can be... A, for it, against it, but you can maintain a level of, of, of decency and respect and uh, treat people the right way. And I, I can't wait for this to be over because this has been very nerve-wracking for me, going back and forth, back and forth. I finally made my, my decision I'm going to live with that decision. I have to do what I want to do, what my heart tells me to do, what my mind and my conscience tells me to do, not what my colleagues want me to do or anybody else. Because if I do what other people want me to do, 
I won't be able to live with myself. I'll be violating my, my conscience, and I, I can't do that. I respect both sides, whether we agree or disagree. We need to be respectful and, and decent and treat people with respect. Uh, you can disagree, but we need to disagree appropriately and in an adult manner. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much for those comments, Alderman Herman. Is there any other discussion? Any other discussion? See none. Will the clerk please call the roll? Okay, that's not good. Nobody's waiting. There. Hold on. Come on. Laptop. That's just mean of me. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> Twelve eyes, three no's. Thank you very much. Motion passes. Next item is item 2.2, .2, which is resolution number 178 of 1415 by Alderman Heideman. Authorizing the appropriate city officials to co-sign with the Sheboygan Area School District in the conversion elevation application through the Wisconsin DNR Stewardship Grant Program. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to pass the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? See no discussion. Would the clerk please call the roll? Thirteen eyes, two noes. Motion passes. Before we adjourn, I'd just like to ask the council's indulgence for a short presentation. Earlier this evening, we held a retirement reception for City Attorney Steve McLean. Steve began his work for the City of Sheboygan as the Assistant City Attorney in November of 1985. A year and a half after Steve ran for the open position, was elected to the office of city attorney in April of 1987. During his 28-year ten tenure as city attorney, he's worked with six mayors, Richard Schneider, James Schramm, Juan Perez, Bob Ryan, Terry Van Akron, and myself, two city clerks, various uh, chiefs of police, and a city administrator, many fire chiefs, city engineers, and planning directors. He's gone through 29 city council elections, and on behalf of all city residents, I would like to thank Steve for the thoughtful and devoted work that he did on behalf of the city of Sheboygan. Whatever legal, legal paperwork was needed for any city project, he could always be counted on to have the proper work done on a timely basis. Steve's legal advice was sought out by all department heads and elected officials. City City Attorney Steve McLean's retirement is effective this Friday at April 30th at 5 o'clock. And we wish Steve all the best in retirement. And we hope that he will have time to spend more time with family and increase his trips to their cabin in northern Wisconsin. Steve, I'd like you to please join me at the podium as I want to present you a special certificate of appreciation. <laughs> The certificate reads, Certificate of Appreciation, the City of Sheboygan is honored to present Stephen McLean, the Certificate of Appreciation and Recognition of your 30 years of dedicated service from November of 1985 through April 30th of 2015, signed Jim Amodio, Chief Administrative Officer, and Michael Vandersteen, Mayor of Sheboygan. Steve, congratulations, and have a great day. gift bag for Steve to take along with uh, mementos of uh, City Hall. And Steve, would you like to say a few words? <coughs> uh, thank you, Mayor. 
First thing I'd like to say is it's 5 o'clock tomorrow, Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> That's official day, not Friday. <laughs> Thank you very much, and all that I can say, much that's coherent right now, but uh, really appreciate working for the city, the number of years I have. It's uh, been a wonderful career. Uh, I'm going to stay living in the city. Uh, appreciate working with all the uh, city uh, aldermen over the years, city mayors all the city department heads, all the city employees, uh, all the police and fire, DPW, uh, it's all the boards and commissions that uh, I've attended and uh, people don't realize until you get votes like tonight uh, how thankless a job uh, working as an elected official or an appointed official or a city employee uh, can be for the city. And I, I really appreciate the fact that people willing to run, willing to be appointed, willing to work for the city. Uh, it's, it's an important thing. And uh, until you get to uh, tough votes, people don't realize that. People think it's, uh, you know, uh, they're just sitting there uh, on the dole or not doing their job or whatever. But uh, it's, it's really important. And uh, I think that's all I better say. Thank you very much. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to adjourn. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor of adjournment, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? We stand adjourned. Thank you very much.